Hello, Monetization Nation. Welcome back to another episode with Lari delk -Radecki. In episode one, we discussed how entrepreneurship has helped the widow of a police officer create the life she wants and provide wealth for pe the people she loves. In today's episode, we'll discuss why we need to focus on our relationships in business, Laurie's top five tips for relationship marketing, and more. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business, causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. What is the greatest mistake or failure that you've made in your business career and what did you learn from it? So it's, um, I will tell you a story and it's kind of, it's kind of stepping on my own toes, but, and it's, and it's on a personal level, but I also learned to apply it in business. So, um, as a mom, you know, you're talking to your children. And a lot of times when you talk to your children, you're training them and, you know, and you say, look into mommy's eyes, right? Mm -hmm. what, because you want to get their attention, mm -hmm. right? And so I remember a point, I won't say which one of my kids it was, but I remember a point that I was, you know, multitasking, right? I was doing a bunch of different things. And one of my, I was at my desk, one of my children came up to me and started telling me something. And I was doing that and I was listening, but I was also multitasking and I was just kind of, mm-hmm, 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 while I was typing, looking at my computer and, and this child grabbed my chin and pulled me and said, mommy, look into my eyes. <laughs> and, and with that, it was just kind of like a smack, you know, step on your toes and, and like, oh my goodness. And it just kind of really hit me this is my child. I need to pay attention to this child. And, and in that moment, it also really resonated with me and stuck with, you know, the same thing in business. I need to pay attention to whoever's in front of me. And, and I know in business, I would notice after that point when you would be talking to someone and, you know, they, they're like talking to you, but they're like, you know, going like this or whatever while they're talking, right? Or something like that. And it's, and so I just kind of vowed to myself that I would, anytime I'm in front of a person, I would be present with them, no matter what, because the same thing, relationships are important. If you don't, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you make, right? If, if you get to the end of your life, and you don't have people that love you and you don't have people that are around you, then what is it all worth in the first place? So your biggest mistake was, was multitasking and not being as present as you should have been for the relationships that mattered most. If you had to tell me maybe the top five secrets from a relationship marketing expert, you, um, that, that you could share with other people, uh, what would those five secrets be? And then maybe you could go through and, and give us an example or a story um, for these if, if you can. Sure. So there's, you know, we, we have the same thing. We have tools nowadays to keep in touch with people, right? So, um, so there's a few things that I do every single day to help keep in touch with the people that follow me for friends as well as family um, one is, you know, the same thing. We have this great thing called the phone, right? And we can text, you know, back in the day, you, it was a, a dollar a text or whatever. I don't even remember it was so long ago, but, but now, you know, everybody has texting free on their phone, right? And almost everybody has a phone. So one of the things I do is every day I take 10 people and I just text them something, and it's no, never business stuff. It, this is just building relationships, keeping in touch. And so it might be, I hope you have a fabulous Friday, you know, hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, you know, and then, and always that always ends up leading to a little bit more conversation, right? So I always try to find other things because most people, especially the same thing, if you're, if you're in business, but you're not just, you know, 
sending your business stuff out all the time, but you're actually working to build those relationships, people will reply to you, right? And so, but then that can a lot of times lead to other conversations too. So, so that's one thing I do is texting 10 people a day to keep in touch. Um, another thing I do is, of course, I have an email list, you know, for business, for people that follow me that come to my website, you know, I, I have that. So that's one way to keep in touch with people. Um, but I think also one huge thing is in your emails, if you're going to have an email list, you need to give people value, right? Give people reasons why they want to stay on your email list. So you think about it yourself, all the emails that you get in a day, you sit down at your desk. And of course, the first thing you go through is you delete all the spam, right? And then the second thing you do is you look at the emails and you glance at each one of, is this something I need to respond to right way, right now? Does it get scooched to the folder for a rainy day whenever you have time that you read this, this email, but you know, that day never comes usually, right? So, um, so, and of course, then your websites, you know, and then um, phone calls. So the same thing, picking up the phone and actually talking to people, not just texting. And so I, I do the, the same thing with that. I try to call between three and five people a day. I put it on my schedule of the same thing of just saying hi, hearing someone's voice, or even like nowadays, you know, I've used Zoom for so many years, but nowadays, you know, a lot of people are since COVID started, right? Even more, but the same thing, get on a Zoom and talk to somebody and have like, you know, like your Starbucks coffee chat, but in person, you know, in your own homes. And so, but just talk to each other, keep in touch. And the same thing, no business stuff, just to say hi, see how someone's doing look into their eyes. Another one is social media. <clears throat> so, you know, there's um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, Twitter, there's all the different platforms and you can be on all of them, but usually nobody does everything good. But one thing I, I, I also teach and train on is the time blocking and doing a little bit of everything, but doing it good and being consistent while you're there. So um, another thing that I teach on is, you know, no notifications on your phone. I don't have anything pop up on my phone, not even texting. I only check my texts when I'm scheduled to check my texts or I have extra time in my day or whatever. So, so that way I'm not getting distracted from the things that I plan to do. So the same thing with social media. Um, then another thing is, is greeting cards. So the send out cards, I, I use that to be able to send cards to people to keep in touch. So I, I send cards of happiness. One of my cliche sayings is I, I get to send happiness through the mail. And that's what I want. I don't want it to just be kind of a, like a, mm, okay, you know, I got this card and eh, well, it was okay. Right. I want them to get it and go, Oh, wow. This is awesome. I want that to bring out those endorphins, right? And make them feel good. And so that's, of course, gonna build the relationship with you with them because it pulls the heartstrings together, right? But it also keeps in touch. And, and like you said earlier, you're remembering them, right? You're Right, exactly, yes. And then having tools to keep in touch with the important dates. So like their birthday or their anniversary, you know, so a lot of people, send Christmas cards and a lot of people don't, you know, and so it's, but like I always do, but I also send different cards throughout the year. Like one, I actually went into a store the other day that a friend of mine owns the store here locally and outside of Nashville. And she had one of my cards on her counter at the store. And, and it just, it, the front of it says, uh, smile real big and it has a smiley face and it says it's like yoga for your face <laughs> and so I saw that saying somewhere and I thought I've got to do something with this and so I did I sent out a few cards with that on it and just a cutesy little message on the inside you know the same thing just to make somebody smile when they opened it up you know and it obviously made her feel good it she put it in her business right on the counter at the checkout register and then when I happened to be in the business and she never even said anything to me about getting the card. And 
I happened to go in the business last week. And when we were checking out, I saw, and I was like, oh my goodness, you have my card right here on your counter. And she's like, oh yes, I love that card. I meant to tell you, thank you. And, um, but th that made me feel good too, you know, that, that she thought enough to even show my card to everybody that comes in her store. I love it. Wow. These are some great ideas, some great relationship strategies. So you invest in these building these connections and in remembering people, making deposits, providing value. Then how do you turn that into the to revenue, right? At, at what point is it appropriate and, and how do you do that without it feeling icky to, to uh, monetize those relationships? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm probably, probably the most least aggressive person in marketing that you'd probably ever meet. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but I also believe that when you are building the relationships properly, and you do have the good ethics and morals and integrity behind that, business is going to happen no matter what, if, if it is to happen, right? So, I mean, there's, there's some people that your business or your service or your product won't ever be a fit for this certain person. And that's okay, right? But you can still build a friendship with them and build a relationship with them. And one, because they have a circle of people that they know that they can refer you to. But, but you just, if you put your, you know, let's say links and your things out about your business in different places, you know, people are going to find you because people, especially nowadays, they click around, right? Before they do business with you, they research you, they click around, they look for things, they read about things. And so they can find what you do as long as you have it out there in good places for people to find and easily accessible, right? So that's one thing to learn in your business. And so I'll post about that. And so, but then in there, post like about 20% of the time, something about your business. And so even when I do post that, it's still usually something like a testimonial or so it's not a flat out, hey, come buy this from me or come, you know, get this. But it's something that just tells people a little bit more about what I do or what product or service I offer. So that way it gets them to want to, you know, if they're interested, it gets them to want to reach out to me. And then when they reach out to me, then I can follow through with the process of, you know, asking them questions to make sure that I'm offering the best product or service for them. One thing I'll leave you with is, you know, being consistent. I think that's one of the biggest keys also to success that I've had of, you know, especially entrepreneurship, you know, you figure out why you wanted to do what you did. So like I said, with me, it was so when my kids were little, my husband didn't have to work two or three jobs. He could be at home with the kids also when he wasn't working his one job. So that way he could be present and build a relationship with his children. And so I wanted to do things to help support the family. So remember, you know, remember your why that you started because in any business, whether you get very successful or whether you're on the trail to becoming successful, either way, there's going to be hardships. And so in those hardships, you have to remember why you started it in the first place and what you're doing it for to keep that stamina of, to keep going, to push through those trials that are gonna come. Cause it doesn't matter what financial bracket you're in, you're gonna get some of those trials. Thank you so much, Lori, for sharing your stories and knowledge with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, try to text and call at least a few people every day to consistently nurture and grow important connections. Number two, we must make sure our email lists are providing value so people want to stay on them. Number three, it's too much to try to be on every social media platform, but time blocking can help us manage our time. Number four, greeting cards are a great way to send happiness through the mail and strengthen relationships. Number five, if we foster these kinds of relationships, many of them will naturally lead to business. 
Number six, our relationships will be better if we devote our full attention to the people we are with. And finally, number seven, if we remember why we started, it will help us get through the hard times. If you enjoyed this interview and want to learn more about Lori or connect with her, you can find her on LinkedIn or check out her website at lauridelk.me. And there's links to both of those websites in the uh, blog post for this episode. You can also watch, listen to, or read the first episode with Lori. Do you want to be a better digital monetizer? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, you can get a free monetization assessment of your business or subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, you can subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast and YouTube channel. And number three, please follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. How has relationship marketing helped your business? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in your relationship marketing. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.